Debbie and I have had a ball kind of this week uh, talking about our pet peeves with each other and trying to understand them more and uh, figure out, uh, you know, it's interesting, and Debbie's going to talk to you about this tonight more, but Debbie came up with this really cool idea of breaking down um, the pet peeves into level ones, level twos, and level threes. And obviously, level threes are major, major problem breakdowns with a pet peeve, and level ones, she'll tell you more about too. So we're excited to talk to you about it. We've had fun thinking about it. And... Um, so uh, we'll be starting in just another minute. We want to just give a couple more people a chance to get on. I want to say hello to the two of you. Oh, there he is. Hi, Joe. Hey. Happy birthday. Thank you. Craig, happy birthday. Hi, Craig. I know I'm a little late. I know I'm a little late. Forgive me. Better late than never. Belated. That's why they have a belated. <laughs> you know, a lot of people told me to tell you, but I don't know if I ever did. I think you were one of them, Joe. <laughs> Would you tell Craig happy birthday? I had a very nice Hi. birthday. My family, my two sons were here. Shana was here, Debbie, and uh, we barbecued and we went swimming and we went in the jacuzzi and it was a really nice family connection. And I, I just, you know, I'm a pretty big family guy. I was raised uh, that way. My parents really reinforced that. Family is the most important thing, and um, so just having my children around is. Oh, if they're older, one's thirty-two or and thirty, and then Shana was there, and then my stepdaughters were not there, but of course they chimed in uh, with happy birthday. So Emma and Sophie, so I've got to I'm here. I'm wishing you happy birthday again. Oh, uh, hi, hi Emma. Emma. Love you. I love you. <laughs> Good to see you, hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Should we get started? You're 18. Okay. okay good. What time get... is it? It's 7.03. Okay, that's good enough. So we're going to get started, and um, you want to start off sort of defining what we're talking about today, which is... Uh, Pet peeves. Is what it is. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Um, we're going to talk about pet peeves, and I think everybody knows what it is because we all have them, not only with our partners, but we have them with life itself, and we have them with people that we don't even know. Like one of my pet peeves is going to the grocery store and then waiting in line, then somebody is taking their time at the cash register when there's a long line. Chit chatting. They're chit chatting. And then somebody says, Did you get everything? And they say, No, I forgot tomatoes. And it's not, wasn't a real question. And now somebody's got to go run do find tomatoes and you're standing in line and you're in a hurry. So that's an example of pet peeves that have nothing to do with being in a relationship. Today we're going to focus on being in a relationship, but it doesn't matter if your pet peeve is in your relationship or outside, because what pet peeves do, they're the little behaviors that create, you know, kind of a significant or can create a significant annoyance in the relationship. And as we've talked about so many times here, when we become annoyed, we're in a state of resistance and that lowers our vibration. And so the problem with that is that we're more, it's a law of attraction that I'm gonna start finding other things that I'm annoyed with. And I just have, everything's gonna be attracted to me that's at a lower vibration, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go to the grocery store and I have a pet peeve about something or anywhere in the world, I come back to my relationship, I'm frustrated, then you're like my target you know, for getting more frustrated. Mm -hmm. So pet peeves become really important in a relationship. And when they're at a lower level, Greg said, you know, I came up with three levels. We're on the way down to Mexico. I said, there's really three levels of what's going on here. You know, level one are those things that are just kind of adorable. Right. You know, they're- can I, can I give some examples before we get into oh, yeah. the different levels? Oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. I thought it would be fun. I wanna, before we get going here, <laughs> I wanted to just give some examples of pet peeves in relationships, mm -hmm. some of the more common ones. And by the way, if anybody comes up with a really good pet peeve, either put it in the chat box or come right on and tell us what it is. We want to know your pet peeves, and this is confined to relationships. So within a within a primary relationship, it could be any relationship. So actually what we're looking for is um, a pet peeve that you're having that 
you've ha you haven't been able to resolve right. and it's really creating some breakdown in the relationship. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a huge breakdown, but you're struggling with it. Right. If that's you, get on the chat box to Sarah and then we'll bring you on and then we'll give you a look. So here's the common, one of the big common ones, leaving the toilet seat up, right? And I always have this visual because now it's not even a visual, it's real because I actually left the toilet seat up and I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night and fell in the toilet because, <laughs> because, I, but I can only imagine what it's, it's like. It's what we call karma. Yeah, I can only imagine what it's like for the ladies. You know, you, you, you mosey into the bathroom at like midnight and you go to sit down and you feel like you're falling for about a second and then all of a sudden your butt hits this like cold, wet, porcelain toilet seat and it's like, and if you've got a smaller butt, you actually fall, <laughs> fall in the water. And that got to be a real bummer. So, but that can be a real pet peeve for a lot of, a lot of people. So that, that's a common one. I would um, say that's not a pet peeve of mine because you rarely do it, but I when do you do it. it, it's like... I'm sure. Yeah. You want to kill me. Yeah. yeah. The other one that's pretty common is um, after you run out of toilet paper, you don't replace it. That's pretty common. And it can be extra annoying if the spare roll is in another room. Not too bad if it's right there. You do that. I do that. You do that, too. I don't do that. You do that. I don't I've done it. No, exactly. <laughs> Maybe okay. once or twice. <laughs> Another common one, squeezing the toothpaste tube from the middle, not the end, or leaving toothpaste uh, <laughs> droppings on the sink or inside the sink. That's another one. Big one. I've heard that a lot from people. I don't um, do that. You don't do that. I don't do that. Not do that. Yeah. Here's one that we do, and you know we'll talk more about our own, but refusing to suggest an activity or a restaurant or a movie. You know, you're asking your partner, what do you want to do? I don't care, do whatever you want to do. So then you suggest one and you go out, and then they have your partner doesn't enjoy it and they blame you. That it do could be a pet peeve. No, I don't think we do that. I don't think we do no, that. No. Okay. Um, this is a, one of my favorites because Debbie does this from time to time. Turning into a baby at the first sign of a cough or a cold. I don't do that. And then she expects me to pamper <laughs> her while she spends time looking up um, some kind of rare <laughs> cancer that she thinks she has. I so, so don't do that. Do I? It's another one you do. Really? When you get sick. You're not a good patient. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm not huh. a good patient. I thought I was good when I got sick. This is one I do. Talking down Valentine's Day, and then I claim that it's over-commercialized. She doesn't like that. Every Valentine's Day, it's like, really? I know. Go out, get a card, get a gift. Yeah. Walmart has made this another billion dollar day for themselves. So I get, and then she, yeah. she's like, I took all the romance out. Exactly. Um, used tissues left around the house, chronic lateness. How about this one? Blanket theft. Anybody do that? <laughs> I might do huh? that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah. I mean, I do that. <laughs> Another pet peeve, complaining about driving. As soon as you get in the car, you hear, slow down, you know? That's a don't, big one. Then you hear, don't tell me how to drive. And you're like, ask for directions. I'm not asking for directions. <laughs> and it goes on and on and on. You know, driving is a bit. Is that one for us too? Well, I think it's like, you know, we came back from Mexico today. Yeah. And is this the time to talk about this? Was it a pet peeve of yours? Well, you were coming. I was driving, which I normally do. And he said, uh, I said, do I go left or right? He said, right. And it was left. Left, yeah. And I said to you afterwards, thank God you know what you're doing. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. So I it wasn't so much of a pet peeve, but it no. was an annoyance. It was an annoyance. It was like, annoyance. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah. don't give me the answer if it's wrong. Yeah. That is a pet peeve yeah. of yours. Yeah. If you don't know, don't say it. Yeah, exactly. Quiet. Okay. Anybody have this one? Loading the dishwasher improperly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> For it's up or down? I don't know. I still don't know. It's down because if it's up, you can impale yourself mm -hmm. on the knives. That's true. Yeah. Okay. But they don't get as right. clean. Right. Turning the thermostat up or down without consulting your partner? Um, anybody do this, repeatedly hit the snooze button while your partner's still asleep. That could be annoying. I'm chewing like a farm animal, chewing like a pig. 
all those yeah. sounds, noises. I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. Um, you can do this. Pack in the whole closet for an overnight trip. I don't do that. No, you don't, you don't do that. I'm pretty good. You're pretty good. Over controlling the remote control of the TV. I definitely don't do that because <laughs> I don't know how it works. Too bad use it. Um, bad timing on starting a serious talk. You know, you're just about to go to bed or you're just about to go to work and your partner comes up to you and says, we need to talk. And they're very upset. And then they, you know, they blame you for not caring at that point. So it's, it's, a, it's a dilemma. So those are just some examples of pet peeves. You know, I can think of a ton more, you know, clothes being on the floor, snoring, so many things. So there's so, so many pet peeves that people have. Yeah, if you guys can think of more, just put it in the comment box and Sarah will let us know. Did we yeah. get any? We've got one. Okay. Um, it's not a spouse issue, but okay. one of our parents repeats the same stories every time <laughs> we get together. My spouse is so oh. wonderful to listen to the same stories over and over, but I've never addressed it with my parents. It's harmless, but definitely a pet peeve. Mm. Right, right. So that, I, I love that because my dad used to do that. I mean, the same stories over and over. And people would say, oh, your dad told me, uh, showed me all the pictures and told us all the stories about you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's cute in the beginning, but then after a while, I think it started to wear on everybody. And um, that's a great segue into what we want to talk about now, which is the shift from annoying to adorable. Because when we meet, everything's adorable, right? And then as we get to know each other and all these things come up, they become a little bit more annoying. Mm. So what was once cute is now kind of annoying. And the real, the real magic in getting beyond pet peeves is to look at your partner more adorable than annoying. And we tend to do the opposite. We tend to have a pet peeve and we magnify it. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about pet peeves, they come in levels. So level one is, can I talk about it? Sure. Now? Yeah. Okay. So level one is those things that your partner does that are cute, a little bit annoying, but kind of cute. More yeah. cute than annoying. They are the little things and we could get annoyed about them, but we just choose to look at the cuteness because they're so cute. Yeah. They're mildly annoying. They're not, just, just, they're, mildly just mildly annoying. And you're not really trying to change it. You're not trying to change it because there's such a cuteness to it and it's just who they are. So level one um, pet peeves are kind of where we want all the pet peeves to be, but what happens is they tend to escalate. So before we talk about the different levels, did you, you said you wrote down some of our yeah. level ones. So level one for me, mildly annoying, but not annoying to care about changing it. It's kind of cute is uh, Debbie's like a food pirate. I don't know if anybody else knows this experience. <laughs> like. So sweet, I'm going to get some ice cream. Do you want any? No, I don't want any. And then I come over to the couch with my <laughs> bowl of ice cream. And she, I said, do you sure you don't want, no, I don't want any? And the next thing, no, I have no ice cream. And she's eating the whole bowl of ice cream. Or that, she's thinking, that's an exaggeration. She, she'll take a spoon. I'll take she'll a spoon. Take a spoon. And then she takes small little bites on the spoon, so I lose the spoon for about five minutes. Because I don't want it to go away so quickly, so yeah. I'm savoring it. Right, that's okay. And he's piece. becoming impatient. Yes, I but do. I'm just trying not to consume so much ice cream. And I say, get, get another spoon. You do. But you don't want to. No, not at that point, because now I'm sitting on the couch watching TV. Yeah. I have to get up again. Okay. If you wanted to, I mean, you should have told me to watch I know, but if you, okay. So the other so thing you do. So, but you see that as cute. It's kind of cute. It's, it's still kind of cute. So what's cute, cute about and it? And you're saving me from eating all the ice cream. You're saving me from some calories. Okay. I don't want to have to eat it all myself. Is so there anything else cute about helpful. it? That's helpful. Just the way you do it, because we know it's kind of a joke now. It's right. kind of like a, Right. You yeah. know. I know it's coming. Yeah. Okay. So the other one that you do that is a, a little bit annoying is, and I'm not sure you're going to write really, one. It's it's one more level one is that you know sometimes she'll talk to me mm -hmm. while I'm in the middle of a movie, and I'm just kind of like watching and I'm kind of trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Next thing you know, she's like talking to me about something that happened this afternoon, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, could you could you? Just <laughs> well, those are a few of my level ones. Yours okay. were. Well, wait a second. So, talking to me when I ask you things or say something in the yeah. middle of a movie right. is cute? It's a little bit cute. It's a little bit yeah. cute. Yeah. It's, it's not, mildly irritating. It's mildly irritating. Yeah. But what's cute about it? What's cute about it is that 
you know, you are so like not in the movie and I am so in the movie. So I think it's cute that it's I'm cute like. that you're kind of like, you're, you're, okay. you're not so focused on the thing. Okay. I'm really focused on it. That we could watch the same movie and both be in different spaces on it. Right. Yeah. So here's the deal. To move up the ladder from level one to level two to level three, one of the main components is repetition. So if I did this in every single movie, my guess is that level one, yeah. that peeve would turn into a level two. That's true. But I probably don't do it. I don't no. think I do it very often. So no. when I do do it, it's kind of cute. Right. That's okay. True. Yeah, so okay. just to emphasize that point, I think it is true that the more you do the behavior that is uh, annoying, the worse it gets. And then we move from level one to level two. One of your level ones, I think you said was stating when I opened. He just did it. Yeah, it, he just, <laughs> exactly, that's the point. I state the obvious, I really, is that hard for you? Yeah, well it is, in movies. So like we'll be watching a movie and then something will happen like, like the, the father gets really mad at the daughter, you know, he's yelling at the daughter and then crippling over. What's happening here is he's really upset with his daughter. <laughs> like, state the obvious. Thank you for the update. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cute because okay it's cute because his reaction so I, I look at him and he knows now I just look at him he's like okay stating the obvious exactly yeah, exactly come on let's hear some other people of your pet peeves tell us we really want to hear so tell us more about you and we'll keep talking keep talking a little bit more about um, Let's move on to, I just want to, you have another level one you want to well, share? Wait a second, you only, you had two level ones Your on me. Your other level one, I think it had to do with. Um, you said you were going to guess some level ones of mine. Um, you said something about um, recording people when they're giving me instructions. Oh, is so yeah, one? yeah, it is a level one. So Craig wants to make sure that when, because he's not really technically oriented and you know, both of us have terrible memories. So if somebody, like a service person comes and tells us what's wrong, Craig will say, come here, I want to I wanna understand this. And he'll say, okay, now tell me exactly what's going on. And he does this. Hold on a second. Hold on. Okay, go. <laughs> and then records them telling the instructions. It's, Again, it's helpful. It's, it is helpful. And that's why I don't get so annoyed. But I think it's, it's cute. And it's adorable. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so level twos. Level twos. Okay, so level two is when the level ones become escalated. So level ones can turn into level twos, like I said, if it becomes very repetitious, or sometimes they're just more annoying. The difference between level one and level two is that level twos are more annoying than they are adorable. And There's... level one's more adorable than it is annoying. <laughs> Stating the obvious. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so level two. <laughs> level twos, um, level twos can be a problem because they are more annoying. And so, what you want to do is focus on the more adorable part of it. And um, so, you had um, some examples. Yeah, for me, one of my big level twos for Debbie, it's kind of pretty irritating these days. Is um, over the years, Debbie has. Um, had some training on how to use the remote control of the TV, <laughs> but for some reason, she still does not know how to use the remote control. So I'm in charge all the time, but she can kind of turn it on sometimes, but even that, I don't know why she has a block. So I'm in charge of the remote, and I don't like to be in charge of the remote all the time. So that's a, a level, a le kind of a level two for me. Um, because it has more frequency to it. It's got a lot of frequency, exactly. So, um, so what part is adorable? Well, there is an adorable part. The adorable part for me with her not knowing the remote is it kind of puts me in charge in a way, and I don't mind being in charge sometimes, you know? I mean, the truth is she's got to wait for me anyway because we're usually going to watch TV together, but I think the level two part is when I'm not watching TV at all. And she mm -hmm. needs me to come over and, and kind of get her the right channel. And, um, you know, we have these new apps right now, right? We don't have cable anymore. We just have apps. So, you know, I'm so an inconvenience is you. Uh, yes. Thank you. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. And that is a big pet peeve of mine. Right. Okay. Yes. So I understand that. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any others? Well, for you, uh, 
for both of us, we both have, maybe you could talk about it as washing the car. Um, oh, yeah. It's a big one. So my, with Craig, I have a, um, a kind of OCD thing with the car. I like my car is really, really clean. So the outside, the inside stays pretty clean. And Craig is like the opposite. He doesn't care. The inside's dirty. It's got stuff in it. It's got trash in it. It's got stuff that's valuable in it. And the outside is the same. Like to him, it's like a waste of time and money to go get your car washed. And that becomes a problem for me because he keeps the car outside. And I told him, I said, the problem is I look at the house and the landscape is nice and everything's really nice. And then there's your car. <laughs> <laughs> and it's dirty and it's muddy. Mm. So I asked him to get it um, washed. Right. And it's really important when we go down to Mexico because I, I think a clean car drives better. It's just one of those things. So then what happens is that I bug him a lot about it. Like we're going to Mexico, please make sure you get the car washed. Right. Or your car's kind of dirty, can you please get it washed? And it gets to the point of nagging, which I think then becomes your... Yeah, then it becomes a pet peeve of mine that she's constantly yeah. nagging me to get the car washed. Right. So her pet peeve becomes my pet peeve. Yeah. Got a question. Yay. <laughs> Are pet peeves things you don't like seeing in yourself or can't accept about yourself, which you identify in another person, i.e. your partner? And can you resolve the pet peeve with your partner by resolving that pet peeve within yourself? That's a great question. Um, I would say oftentimes what um, we don't like in ourselves, we project onto others. Absolutely. Not all the time, but a lot. You know, most of what we do is projection, right? Mm -hmm. And so that is a very astute observation and question. The answer is absolute yes. So the other part of the question is, if I fix it in myself, will it fix it in the partner? And absolutely, because we're judging ourselves, we're down on ourselves. And if we fix that, then we're not, we're going to have more forgiveness, more compassion, more ability to see the adorableness in it with um, our, our spouse. So yeah, that's yeah, I would pretty, totally agree. I like that question. I like the idea of recognizing that we don't want to be upset. We don't want to be angry. We certainly don't want to be at a level three uh, pet peeve. And Debbie will talk about level threes in a second uh, because then the relationship really starts to break down. So if you can move from, you know, a, a, a annoying to adorable, that's such a, big move and adorable is love you know you're at down debbie's ladder you're at the le level of love which is compassion love understanding empathy so yeah i i i think that whatever the pet peeve is you want to stay at level one make it adorable okay any other level twos there was one that you had um i remember you mentioned to me how when we're trying to watch when we want to watch a netflix movie mm -hmm. And oftentimes we don't prepare. Mm -hmm. It's not like we know which movie one we want. Right. And and so we sit down oh, yeah. and we start looking for a movie to watch. Yeah. Ooh. So you know what happens is that a lot of times we'll get our food and then we get our food set up and then we'll and I for me it's like just watch something that's trending, you know, that's popular. Mm -hmm. And Craig is more analytical than I am, so he's like, Oh, that looks like it's pretty good. Let me Google it. And then he's Googling it and then he's like, oh wait, I got distracted. I'm looking at my emails, my texts, and then he tells me about that. It's like, stay focused, just, you know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't think I like that one. What else is playing? It's like, our food is getting cold. This isn't even fun anymore. <laughs> 30 minutes like, later, we're still looking for a movie. So, you know, I said like, if we're gonna do this, let's pick the movie in advance. We're so starting that, to do that. Yeah. yeah. We spent yesterday, we spent before we had our dinner sitting down we spent about 20 minutes going through netflix deciding what we would watch before right. we sat down with the which so, was helpful so you know that as an example of a level two so what you want to do with a level two is you you realize it's become more annoying like for me that's more annoying than adorable and so the work there is to see that yeah. and then find the adorableness because what you want to do with level twos is you want to get them down to level ones so when i look at craig doing this Okay, let me Google it and see about the reviews. Oh, wait a second, I got an email. And I just say, isn't he cute? He's like a little ADD, mm. but he's trying really hard. I'm not doing it, he's doing it, so I'm not gonna criticize him. It's cute. Okay, so, yeah, it's very cute. Yeah, so level <laughs> I'm two very is cute. find, level twos are more annoying than adorable, so what you wanna do is find the adorableness in them. Right. Okay, level three? Right. 
Okay, so level three, what has happened here is adorableness has left the building. All you have is annoying. And these are escalated pet peeves. These are the things that are just so annoying. And when we look at our practice, I would probably say that 50% of the complaints that come in are level three pet peeves. Mm -hmm. And people start saying, he always, he never, we don't get each other, he doesn't mm -hmm. listen to me, she doesn't, whatever. So um, pet peeves are really, can be really serious when they escalate to level threes. They turn into, like John Gottman, one of our teachers talks about the four horsemen and uh, two of them, one of them is criticism. So they begin to sound like criticism all the time. And the other one is contempt. And contemptuous is like this one up, I'm one up from you and you're wrong and I'm right. And how could you do that? And you always, you never, always, how do you behave that way? You What's your problem? That. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It becomes an attack on the character. It becomes an attack on the character. That's an yeah. attack on the personality. And so, you know, you're no longer addressing a certain behavior, you're attacking the whole person. And so we know that doesn't work very effectively. So now there's a big breakdown in the relationship and we've got some issues to deal with. So we really need to begin to kind of talk about, well, what do we do then? So level three, some examples. Um, you know, you want to give an example for me. Um, it's, it's, it's not a level three yet, but it's almost turning into a level three at this point because it's been it's going on. It's a high level two. It's a high level. It's been going <laughs> it's on for pop. a very long time. And it's very simple. I'll say to Debbie, um, on two or three times a week, I'll say, what's for dinner? And she'll say, I don't know. And then it's like, what do you want for dinner? Right? Because I'm not you might say, for Yeah, you, you, you might say, what do you want for dinner? But typically, you'll just say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of left like, you know, we're trying to address it in certain ways these days by each of us have dinner responsible for dinner on certain days of the week. So that's kind of helping a little bit. But the mm -hmm. I don't know felt to me like, I don't know, you decide. Or I don't know, you know, whatever. And then nothing's going to happen. That's my fear, right? My fear is that we're just going to, then it's going to come rolling around and we haven't made any decisions. So that was upsetting me. So is it upsetting you when I say I don't know because then it feels like it falls on your shoulders? Mm -hmm. And that feels burdensome and annoying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. So that, that's kind of almost at a level three, but I think one of the things we're doing is we're addressing it now. So right. I'm really glad we are. We actually have a, <clears throat> a way we've been problem solving it. Um, for Debbie, um, I think you had mentioned something about asking you things over and over and over. Is that a level oh, three for yeah. you? yeah. So what Craig will do is he'll say, can you um, call the plumber because we've got a plumbing problem? And I'll say, yeah, I'll do that. And then like 30 seconds later, he'll say, um, so you're going to call the plumber today, right? Yeah, I'm going to call the plumber. And then about 10 seconds later, he'll say, so um, when are you going to call him? <laughs> and I'm like, are you serious? This is like the third ask on the same request. And I'm going to call him today. Well, I just want to know like when today, because I know you got a busy day. I'll call him yeah. today. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Oh my God. It's, it's incessant follow up. <clears throat> and, um, you know, so that's a perpetual problem. A perpetual problem in a, in a relationship is anything that just continues. And as we did with mine, you know, we try and find things that, like, we just recognize this is it. This is just like kind of the person tends to do this. And so we have to figure out. What's, what's a way that we can manage so that it becomes less likely to happen? Because it's my anxiety, you know, about yeah. making sure it gets done. So I'm just right. going to keep asking over and over until I'm feeling more confident that it actually is going to happen. And I do get that from my dad, and I know it, you know. But it's so entrenched. It's so much a part of me that it's really hard to stop it sometimes. Right. And I understand how, how challenging that is for you. Yeah, it really is challenging. And so when you deal with level three... The, the real key is not to get triggered yourself because when you're dealing with a level three, the person's going to come at you pretty hard. You know, that's just because it's got that annoying energy to it. They're super, super annoyed. So the way to receive a level three pet peeve 
is with love and presence and acceptance. Mm -hmm. So when Craig, you know, says over and over and over again, so when I'm on top of my game, mm -hmm. I'll say, sweetheart, Jack, it's a yeah. Jack situation. Right. I'll smile at him. I'll say, I've got it. Don't worry. Calm down. It's okay. But when I'm not on top of my game, I might just say, are you serious? Are you kidding me? How many times have you told me this? You do this all the time. Mm -hmm. So then I respond in a level three kind of way. So, yeah. Yeah. So those level threes are really important to address. And there's different ways to address these pet peeves. Debbie and I were talking about it. Uh, what are some interventions, ways to address? Obviously, you're going to address a level three different than you're going to address a level one. So let's talk a little bit about how you might address a level one. We have a question. Let's let's go for a question. <laughs> really quick, this goes back to the horsemen. Um, Emma wants to know what are the other two horsemen out of the four horsemen you mentioned. Okay, the other four. Three, uh, two. The other one. There's defensiveness is one of them, becoming defensive. Uh, criticism is this third. Contemptuous is the fourth, and I'm blanking out on the first. It's a stonewalling. Stonewalling is the fourth, actually. Yeah. So those are them. Yeah. Defensiveness, criticism contempt and stonewalling. And each of them are, are really, really pretty tough to deal with, but I would say contempt is the worst of them all. That's when you are so self-righteous and you just know your partner is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really tough one. Please comment more, I want to hear. So we have another comment from some of our returning guests, Carol and Carlos. They said, we have experienced some challenges with our differences in cleanliness standards. Mm. This has been a tough pet peeve for Carlos to work through with me. We just run a report that practicing appreciations has helped us with that so much, as well as me making the question or me asking the question, how can I help make your day a little easier? These practices have helped us circumvent the pet peeve escalations. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. Yes. Thank you. That's Thank great. You, Carol. That's Great. So Carlos is doing better with the hygiene. Was it a hygiene issue? Cleanliness. Cleanliness issue. Yeah. yeah. And so important right now with yeah. what's going on. But that's such a great example. And I really appreciate you coming on and commenting Thank that, you, you know, you know, things get better when we look. I always use the ladder analogy, but when we look up toward love, um, which is compassion and presence and, you know, gratitude mm -hmm. and clarity. And clarity and all those positive, wonderful things. When we look in that direction, things will always get better. When we look down toward resistance, you should, you always, and criticism kind of creating that separation, mm -hmm. things get worse. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. It really mm -hmm. is. And mm -hmm. it applies to everything in life, whether it's with your partner, your children, your parents. You know, the comment about the parents, you know, being, um, what was it? Sharing the same stories. Sharing the same stories. You know, yeah. it's like you can look at that and say, it's cute. It's not going to change. They're at that stage in life. That's how I had to do with my dad. Or you can just say, oh my God, this is so embarrassing and I can't believe it and it's exhausting. And there's just two ways of looking at the same behavior. And 100% when you look at it through loving eyes, as I always say, just put your loving glasses on. Now what do you see? And that's the whole concept with the level three, these ones that are really difficult to deal with. The idea of being able to reframe what you're seeing, which is what Debbie just mm -hmm. did. She reframed something that could have been viewed negatively right. into right. a more positive. So with any kind of pet peeve, especially the ones that are really annoying you, how do you reframe it is a question, you know? And what if maybe you could just say a little bit about reframing. Well, you know, reframing is just that, you know, it's, it's how you look at something. So do I look at something through being annoyed and, and, and how they should be doing something and they're not, and then I just get myself annoyed or do I look at things through loving, appreciated, appreciation, appreciative eyes. Can you give an example of a reframe? Well, the one with my um, dad telling the same stories that that collar had on, that's an example. Another one? Um, God, I could reframe anything. Give well, me a re situation. Reframe one of the ones, your pet peeves with me. Uh, <laughs> reframe, Which one? Okay, reframe the idea that I'm not washing the car and we're going to Mexico. This okay. morning, you walk out, you had asked me to wash the car and it's not washed. Right, right. So Reframe um, that. So I asked him to wash the car for numerous days before we leave. 
Um, he says it's going to, I walk out, it's not done. So if I don't reframe that, I can go down into the muck and I would look at it and say, I can't believe he just, I asked him three days ago, he said he would do it. He always does this. Now I've got to drive to Mexico in this dirty car. And we know that dirty cars don't drive so well. And now I'm upset. If I were to reframe it, I'd say, you know what? He was really busy with work. I saw him running around. He's done so much to try and get everything that we need to get to Mexico. He doesn't care about clean cars as much as I do. It's just not his thing. It's kind of cute. He's a boy. And that's just who he is. So we could get the car clean on the way down. Not a big deal. So that's really a powerful reframe. It saved us a real long drive to Mexico, right? <laughs> so <laughs> And we went with the dirty car. So, <laughs> that was powerful. And, you know, the other thing is that I am more likely to wash the car when I don't feel like I have somebody who's reprimanding me if I don't do that. So, you know, my tendency is to want Debbie to be happy about that. And so the other side of the coin to uh, reframing something is that when you see your partner do what you're asking them to do, you do want to make sure you notice it and you praise them. And yeah. so we, Debbie and I like to always say, you know, catch your partner doing something good that you like. Doing so it right. Doing it right. Yeah. So um, that's really, really important, would you say? Yeah. yeah. So every time you wash the car, I try and give you um, a Sex. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sex for Sex. car wash. Sex, exactly. What a great deal. <laughs> All of a sudden, those car washes are more important. But... Um, yeah, no, and it's interesting. I was just thinking about that that trip down to Mexico um, because we didn't get the car washed, and I was okay with it. You were, you really were. You know, and I appreciated that. Yeah, yeah. and it's all because of the reframe. Yeah, I'm so cute. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so the other thing in terms of conversations around pet peeves, especially if they're pretty toxic is uh, you don't want to, we talked about this, you don't want to attack your partner's personality. You want to be very specific about the behavior. You know, you would never say to your partner, you're so lazy, you know. You want to identify what is the pet peeve specifically, as specific as you can. And then you want to have a conversation about it. Like I could have said, you know, you're always saying you're going to do something and then you don't. Yeah. And always. this isn't a good example. Right. So putting down the core of your character. Yes. Rather than just expressing dissatisfaction with what didn't happen. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, we like to say in, uh, in our work that you want to make a request, not a demand. So that's the other thing you want to keep in mind. <clears throat> if you are looking to change your behavior like a pet peeve, you do want to make a beautiful, loving request of your partner and give them the freedom to say no or to not do it or to fail, you know, because within that freedom, you'd be surprised how often the goal is achieved. It's when you feel pressured and when you feel nagged and when you feel like you're cornered uh, that, you know, there's going to be re more resistance. So um, it's important to let go. So what we thought what would be really, really helpful for couples is to actually um, identify the level one, level two, and level three pet peeves you have. And we said it should just be like a pet peeve conversation because we had this when we were talking about doing the segment on the way down to um, Mexico. So the way I would do it is just say, okay, let's have a pet peeve conversation. Let's keep it fun because it is kind of funny. And let's identify, each person identifies a one level one, one level two, one level three, and then you share and talk about it. And remember the level ones, more adoring, more adorable than annoying. They're kind of cute. And it's nice to share that with your partner. It's nice to say, you know what? A level one, because you're so damn cute with this, is when you do this. It's nice to hear. But it's also important to understand that there's this little teeny piece of annoyingness because you want to make sure that you understand that it's not 100% adorable so that you don't repeat it to an extent that it becomes a level two. Mm -hmm. We want to keep the level ones right where they are. Okay. And in order to do that, you've got to understand both sides of it. So that's how you would recommend talking to their so partner. So talking to your partner way. about what the level ones are, have fun with it, reinforce the adorable, understand the annoying part. For level twos, um, share one each 
and just recognize that um, there is that annoying part and that's where the reframing comes in and also as we talked about repetition will drive a level one to a level two and a level two to a level three so just think through your own behavior like you know this thing with the remote i didn't even know that before you had mentioned it to me so mm. now that i know that i could be a little bit more conscientious sure. when i'm asking you in a situation where i know it's going to be inconvenient right and i might even just learn how to do the darn thing myself that would be right great. yeah so just it, the, the knowledge is really important and keeping in mind especially on the level two ones that you know, whatever your pet peeve is of your partner, most likely you're going to trigger possibly something that is their pet peeve with you, like with the... Because um, of the nagging. Yeah, no, like with the, um, what was the one, the example we gave tonight about what pisses you off is what, oh, when she nags me about the car wash. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I don't want to get the car washed necessarily. And now I'm feeling nagged, <laughs> but she wants to get the car washed. So right. we're triggering each other. Right. So you just want to be available, aware that of that. That a lot that with the level happens. two, yeah. yeah. So the conversation is really important. Most people don't sit down and have a pet peeve conversation, but it's really important. And then level three is, okay, because adorableness is just gone, just gone. Um, these are really important conversations to have. These are the ones that we see in therapy a lot. And these are ones that you can handle really on your own. Um, and just talk about what are we going to do? I mean, you need a plan of action. Mm -hmm. What was one of our level three conversations? Uh, um, with the dinners. Oh, you know, yeah, with the dinners. So we yeah. kind of created a plan, a, to, a workaround. A workaround. You need a workaround. Yeah. So I know we're running out of time. And I just want to say that this conversation, we, we decided to do pet peeves because we thought it was funny. But as we started thinking about it, we realized it's more than funny. It's like, it's super important to understand how we trigger each other. And through that understanding, we can we can pivot and we can um, move in ways that support each other and create more loving connection. Um, it's also important to understand that pet peeves, like I said in the beginning, come from, to us from all over the place, from our kids, from our parents, from people that we don't know. And when we get triggered by our pet peeves, we, we increase our frustration. And when we come home, we take that frustration off and out on our partners. And so it's just really important to look at how, what, what triggers you and how can you reframe it and look at those triggers in a more loving and adorable way, even if it's at the store clerk where you're buying something. Yeah. Beautiful. So, um, and it's all about being mindful and that's why we're calling it Mindful Monday. It's dating the, the obvious. obvious. <laughs> because, you know, we, we do want to all be more mindful and especially in this day and age with everything that's going on. So, being mindful is being present. Being present is being aware. Being aware is being focused, being here now. So really that's what this is all about. It's being present for your partner, being present in a way that they know you care about them, that you've got their back. And that is the main thing in relationships. We want each other to know we've got each other's back. I'm listening to you, I care about you, I wanna know what upsets you. And that's what this is all about. So. Really just make sure that you spread that love around. Have this pet peeve conversation. It's an awesome conversation. We had so much fun this week talking about it. <laughs> next week, we're going to focus. Do you remember what we're focusing on Sarah, next week? Sarah, do you know? Jealousy? jealousy? I think jealousy. I think it's jealousy. The green Not eyed, as much fun. The green-eyed monster, Shakespeare called it. So jealousy is a tough one. We're going to focus on that. We hope you'll bring your thoughts. We hope you'll bring your comments. And... Uh, we could just open it up if anybody wants any comments before we sign before off. Before we sign off, anybody want to we'll share? Op we'll open up every the audio. Audio is open. Great session. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Fabulous, both of you. What a what a great uh, what a great experience to uh, share your insight and your knowledge. And uh, I just wanted to uh, express the notion that. Oftentimes what we find most difficult with somebody else is what we struggle with internally for ourselves. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I, I just wanted to, you know, draw that out mm -hmm. and make a comment about it. And I also wanted a little footnote. Debbie, our, our uh, 
ancestors came from Poland, they right. didn't have toilet seats. <laughs> they didn't true. have toilets. They had holes, I know. holes in the ground. I know. I don't even know if they had that. I know they had mud on the roof. Yeah. No, Joe, you're absolutely right. And I think another person commented on that, you know, that um, what we see in other people is really what bothers us about ourselves. And if we fix that in ourselves, then maybe we'll see the other person differently. But I think that understanding that what I'm upset with you about, it's just, it's, it's understanding that maybe, maybe there's something to be learned about what's going on with me. And that's the beauty of it. And if I see that, then it's like, um, it's, it's like celebrate the information. Okay. Yeah. So, very well um, said. Is, very well is, said. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph. Thanks, Joe. I love you. Love you. Um, love you too. Emma here. I have, I have a comment about to follow up with Joe and that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really, this is really illuminating for how relationships can help you almost achieve enlightenment in that way. Mm -hmm. Like you, being in relationships helps you get to know yourself even deeper, you know, by excavating what's deeper in, in yourself. And what was, what came up for me most poignant, which I think you and you, Craig and Debbie, you know, this is that, um, you know, a lot of the pet peeves that we talked about, I, you know, I mean, we don't, I don't have that money with my partner, but I do with my sister mm -hmm. and family relationships can be really, really triggering. I know for people, um, they're really deep seated. So I just want to say that I applied a lot of the things that you talked about tonight to, to, you know, outside of my partner and just to my family as well. So I really appreciated the opportunity to not just work, to work on, or work on this in other aspects of my life. Yeah, Emma, thank you so much for mentioning that. And, you know, people always ask us, we've mentioned this before, that with the book, they say, well, does any of it apply? I'm not in a relationship. Does any of it apply to other relationships? And the answer is absolutely. And we, we estimate of 80 to 85% of the book is really applicable to any relationship you have. And it's true. It, it, you know, what we're talking about getting triggered by other people and and having it be more about us is so true in any close relationship that we have. And we see it all the time. Yeah. So we're blessed to have these relationships. You know, when couples come into the office and they say, oh, I've got such an amazing conflict going on with my mom. It's like, that's great. There's such opportunity there. Let's dig in. And they're looking at me like, what do you mean this is great? This is great. There's a lot of stuff to look at and a lot of stuff to move through. And when you do, it's gonna feel so good. Mm -hmm. Which it sounds like, Emma, you've gotten to that point in some aspects. So thanks for sharing, guys. And um, if there's no more questions, we'll look forward to seeing you um, next week. If anybody has any questions about jealousy, email us, let us know. Thank you. Okay, good night. Happy Memorial Day. Bye. Thank <laughs> this you is very Steve much. waving. Bye bye. <laughs>